Take a swab from inside your mouth. I need you open up nice and Jeremy nice. Preston, 33 years Why old. Not? Works as a security guard, ironically enough. Suspected of burglary, broke into Amy Ryan's He's flat. Gentle and as quick as I can. Any form? No trace, PNC or crimin, sir. Two, three, four, five, lovely. So he's never done it before? Maybe he's just never been caught before. We've printed him. We're waiting for live scan results. Okay, if you could turn around and face the wall on your right, please. DNA swabs have been collected. If he's done it before, we'll know soon enough. Can I hold still? Let's to the camera, please. His jacket and his shirt have been bagged. Found traces of blood, presumably his own. What happened to him? What? Onto his face. He got caught. Who by? Josh Hunt. The victim's boyfriend. Surprised him in the act. Did more than surprise him. Now his home is his castle, Josh. <laughs> this isn't the Dark Ages. Sarge. Excuse me? This isn't the Dark Ages. Sarge. Josh Hunt came to his girlfriend's flat to find a stranger inside. He apprehended and detained the suspect using force that he deemed necessary and reasonable. It's all in our notes, Scott. Right. What about forced entry? They left the window open, which is madness on Harker Lane. It's pretty straightforward. So he was caught before he had a chance to steal anything? Custody search has shown that he had time to pocket at least one object. OK. Yes, it's mine. Well, what's it doing here? It was stolen. Well, why wasn't it on your finger? You know why. Are you engaged? Not exactly. Not yet. Where was the ring taken from? I'd left it in a bowl in the kitchen. Oh, she didn't even try and keep it safe. Mr Hunt, we need to get the sequence of events correct before we talk to the suspect. So when exactly did you arrive home? I don't live there. I've got my own place. I arrived there just after... 4.50 a.m. But you have your own key? Yeah. I came in, I turned the kitchen lights on, and that's when I saw him trying to get out, so... I stopped him. Well, you did a bit more than that. And you slept through the entire thing? I'd worked late, so I was shattered. I didn't know Josh was coming over. And why did you go over in the middle of the night? I wanted to see Amy. We'd left things badly, and... I wanted to surprise her, try and smooth things over. At ten to five in the morning? I believe the correct pop culture term is booty call. How romantic. You're handling the Hawk Line burglary? Yeah, we're still waiting on authority for a Section 18 search to the suspect's premises. I authorised that half an hour ago. Stan's already on his way down there. Is there a problem, Joe? No, not at all. Just a breakdown in communication, I'm sure, sir. Nothing in the bedroom. Nice DVD collection, breakfast at Tiffany's. That was a present from a girl. As was the Home Alone box set, no doubt. Just a double shift in a row, innit? Hmm. They are taking their time finding a new sergeant, aren't they? They can take as long as they want. Listen, can I, can I get a parasite? My head's banging. Where are they? In the kitchen, kitchen cupboard.
So what, you don't want the help? Leon, I don't want the interference. There's nothing here. You work at Roscoe Tower? Mm-hmm. It's an office block on Glanville Street. Yeah, I know. All right, let's go. CID can handle the rest of it. Come on. I was drunk. Do you often break into people's homes when you're drunk? I didn't know it was someone's home. It looked like a warehouse. I'd had a few drinks in a pub on Gunner Street. A few too many. I went to the alley to relieve myself. Nice. I saw the window was open. I needed somewhere to crash. Is there something wrong with your own home? Apart from the fact it's 20 minutes walk away, no. I just needed to get my head down, so I climbed in. Next thing I know, the lights turned on by a really angry man. And how long had you been inside before that happened? I don't know, a few minutes. Five, maybe. But not long enough to realise it was someone's home? Oh, I realised when I bumped into the sofa. And the ring? Uh, there was something in a bowl which turned out to be a ring. I stuck it in my pocket, I don't know why. Please, I know how this looks. I just want to put it all behind me. Go back to work. Is that possible? Just one more thing, Jeremy. Have you ever met Amy Ryan before tonight? No, of course not. It's just that you work at Roscoe Tower and so does she. Really? But you've never met her before? No. It's a big building. So he's pleading guilty to burglary? He claims it was a misunderstanding, but yes. OK, well, let's caution him and release him. John, did you ask two of my officers to do a door-to-door on Harker Lane? Uh, well, I requested it. I didn't demand it. Well, I thought Preston held his hands up and interviewed him. He did, but I don't think it's quite as simple as that. He confessed. How's it more complicated? Jeremy Preston works at the Roscoe Tower. I know. Why is that important? Amy Ryan works there, too. Right, well, she didn't recognise him, though, did she? So it could just be a coincidence. Just seems a bit odd to me. Um, a witness saw someone matching Mr Preston's description breaking into Ryan's house at 4.30am. Oh, sure. That's 20 minutes before Josh Hunt arrived. He was there for 20 minutes. What was he doing? Let's get Eddie down there. Check it out. So what's happening now? What do you need us for? Once Eddie's finished, we'll need you to take another look round in case anything else is missing. Okay. All right, this way. I can't tell you what he was doing, but I can tell you where he was doing it. Fingerprints coming through the window and a small blood trail. Now, your suspect might have injured himself, I'm not sure, but it all predates the struggle with Mr. Hunt. Anyway, right, through there. Goes to the toilet. That's the bowl he gets the ring from. himself to some milk. He picked up a knife. When, why would he do that? What's his problem? It gets weird, huh? You just give us a sec. Alright. So we've got his prints here. Things on the wall. What was he doing in here? Who knows? Amy. Thanks, Eddie. Amy. Yeah. I want to know what he was doing in Amy's bedroom. He stood there. While I was asleep, what would have happened if Josh hadn't come over? We're going to interview Mr Preston again. And it's worth bearing in mind that he had had a lot to drink, so it could well be that he was just disorientated. Amy, I um, don't want to alarm you, but I think you should know that Jeremy Preston works in the same building as you. I should go tell her. Yeah, as a security guard. Are you sure? I've never noticed him. It's a bit odd, isn't it? It's a bit more than odd. It could just be a coincidence. Like I said, we're going to speak to him again. Oh, what? That's it, is it? Don't worry. We'll get to the bottom of it. All right? Now, do you have somewhere that you can go? Yeah, work. Yeah, but he's going to be there, isn't he? Don't worry. We'll tell him to keep his distance. Even so, it's probably best that you keep out of his way. Okay? 
Do you understand? Yeah. Hey. Nice one. She's gonna be jumping at shadows now. Well, maybe she should be. You told us earlier that you'd been in the flat for just a few minutes before you were discovered, is that right? That's all it seemed like. All right, what were you doing during that time? <sighs> it's all a bit of a blur, to be honest. We have a witness who places you in the flat for at least 20 minutes. 20? Forensic evidence shows that you moved around quite freely. In fact, you moved from the living room to the bathroom to the kitchen and then to Amy Ryan's bedroom. What were you doing in her bedroom? I told you, I can't remember. I was drunk. Am I being accused of something else here? Look, I know I messed up. But at the end of the day, I'm the only one that got hurt, aren't I? I can't believe we've released them. We've charged him with burglary, now it's up to the CPS. But it amounts to the same thing. There's no formula, just be cautioned. All he stole was the ring. And nothing's changed. With all due respect, sir, everything's changed. He was in a bedroom, using a toilet, toying with kitchen knives. It does sound sinister. But what's the crime? Sinister's not a crime. Aggravated burglary. I am convinced he went into that flat to do more than just steal a ring. Yeah, but you know as well as I do that proving intent to harm is almost impossible, Joe. And Preston has no form of any kind. It's one thing to drunkenly break into someone's house, but we're talking about a whole new level here. We simply don't have the evidence to justify holding him. Now, I agree there could be more to this than meets the eye, but... Is that Amy Ryan's office? Sarah Roscoe from 30, show me dealing. I'm coming with you. So, what's up with Stone? He's been giving Joe a rough ride all morning. He's been pulling double shifts for a month. The two bodies light in uniform, not to mention a sergeant. Yeah. So, any news on replacements? Well, I've been asking, you know, but we're over budget. We're overworked and we're understaffed, and it's starting to show, unfortunately. Callum having a go at Joe's is the prime example of that. Well, I won't worry about Joe, she can get as good as she gets. Yeah, and that's what we thought. Let's talk about it in my office. You said you were going to talk to him? Calm yourself down, Josh. Mind you, Ed. So what happened? We were sitting in the security office having a cup of tea when this guy bursts in and goes for Jeremy. I've never seen anything like it. You Mr Preston's boss? Supervisor. Mr Faraday, look, it's, it's nothing, it's just a silly argument. Can we just drop it? I'm not having it. That's assault in my book. Can you take us to see Amy Ryan, please? Of course. She's through here. Thanks. Put you up. You're right in the office there. We'll come and find you. Thanks. No, it's OK. This isn't Josh's fault. He walked me to work to make sure everything was OK. You said he wasn't allowed to approach me. He's been at my desk. In my desk, in my locked drawer. How do you know? He left this for me to find. It's a muffin. Yeah, it's a muffin. A chocolate muffin like I have every day. How does he know that? Dear Amy, it was a mistake. I hope we can get past this. This is harassment. I can't take Mr. Preston's statement. Come on, I'll buy you a cup of coffee. It wasn't locked. At least it wasn't when I was there. Well, you'd have the keys, wouldn't you? Being security. We've got the keys to doors and cupboards, but not the private desks. Look, I, I came into work. I felt really bad about what I'd done, so I, I looked it up. I just thought I'd leave her a note to say sorry. I know I wasn't supposed to approach her, but what else was I supposed to do? Stay away. I know. I was just tr <sighs> This has gone way too far. It's been blown completely out of proportion. Look, I understand why the bloke's upset, but this is paranoid. What girl doesn't like chocolate muffins? I suggest you go home. You haven't had any sleep. Let everyone calm down a bit. Maybe you're right. I'm shattered. Okay. 
Let's get it with my boss. I don't usually scare easy, but you saw the card, didn't you? He says it's an apology. What do you think it is? I don't know, a message? The card's from Acetone. It's close to work, and I was drinking there last night after work. Why didn't you mention this before? Because I didn't want Josh to know. He can be a bit, you know, protective. So what do you think it means? That he was there, that he was following me, stalking me, I don't know. I sound crazy, but I don't You don't know. sound crazy, you sound scared. Craftsman doesn't want to pursue assault charges, so as far as he's concerned, the whole affair's got way out of hand. I'm not sure that Amy Ryan shares that view, Gov. First he pops up in a home, then he leaves an apology written on a card taken from a bar she was drinking in last night. She's convinced that this is just the beginning. What? Of a harassment campaign. Tell her to call back when she's got evidence of a crime he's actually committed rather than one she thinks he's going to commit. No, I'm sorry, Joe. Right, but it's just as likely that she's reading too much into a couple of coincidences. She never mentioned that bar. Maybe it didn't seem relevant to her at the time. If Jeremy was there and if he followed her home, that puts the burglary in a whole new light, right? Go and question him again about his movements last night. But go carefully, yeah? Acetone's the local drinking hole. I'm going to pick up a card there sooner or later. Do you want to take a seat? So, is that really the reason Amy freaked out? So you weren't there last night? I told you I was at a pub in Gunner Street. Look, sorry, what's the point of all this? Amy Ryan's concerned. About what? About you. Oh. Well, she doesn't need to be. Well, let's look at it from her point of view. You broke into a home, entered a bedroom. Then, having been cautioned for burglary and warned to keep away from her, you left a note written on a card taken from a bar that she was drinking at just hours before you broke in. It didn't happen like that, did it? Well, how did it happen? What were you doing in her bedroom? While she was sleeping? I think you should just let this go. Why is that? I, I went in, I stole a ring, I got a beating for it twice. What more does it say? Let's just drop it. Amy Ryan is a very scared woman. She deserves an explanation, don't you think? What about a boyfriend? He deserves to know why a stranger was in his girlfriend's house. That's the last thing he wants to know. Did something happen, Jeremy? When you were in the bedroom? What's Amy been saying? Why don't you tell us what happened? We made love. Amy and I hooked up at acetone last night. She was letting her hair down. One thing led to another, and she invited me back. You went home together? No, she went on her head. Probably to check the coast was clear. I came later. She left the window open for me. Didn't want anyone to see me going in the front, I guess. We made love in the shower. She went back to bed. I used the bathroom. Felt a bit hungry, so I poked around in the fridge. And then Josh came back. Unexpectedly. Why didn't you mention any of this earlier? To protect her. Amy and I have been seeing each other for a while, and uh, we had to keep it quiet because Josh, well, he's violent. I've got the bruises to prove it. The only reason I took the ring is because she asked me to get rid of it. Do you really expect us to believe that you're having an affair with Amy Ryan? Her favourite colour is blue. It's the colour of her mother's eyes. Her favourite song is The Unforgettable Fire by U2. Her favourite drink is a mojito. She says her favourite film is Breakfast at Tiffany's, but it's actually Home Alone 2. She has a mole on her right shoulder that she worries is growing since a holiday in Marbella last September. And the only reason she refused to marry Josh was because she had a miscarriage two months ago. 
but she never even told him she was pregnant. Which, I guess, was enough to show her that she didn't really love him. Look, if Amy's regretting anything that happened between us, if she is feeling guilty because of Josh, or scared of him, tell her I understand. He's lying. This is insane. I've never seen this man in my life. You work with him. I don't... We work in the same building, that's it. But a lot of the things that he told us about you are true, right? Apart from I've never spoken to him before today, I don't understand. Josh and I had just had a big row. I needed some space, so yes, I went for a drink, but not with him. You went home alone? Yes. But you didn't wake up alone. Look... This isn't about getting plastered and regretting it. This man knows things, personal things, and I don't know how or why. What happens now? Well, I'm sorry, Amy. He's never been under arrest. He's just been cautioned for the burglary. This isn't about the burglary. Do you not see? He's stalking me. <laughs> oh, I get it. It's his word against mine. Everything he told you about last night is not true. Do you understand that? Sorry to interrupt. Josh has been cautioned for assault and he's free to go. Uh, Mr Preston chose not to press charges. Thank you. Amy, why don't you stay here for a bit? If it'll make you feel better. Yeah, thanks. Yeah? What do you think? Oh, he is plausible. Maybe they did have an affair and Amy's trying to conceal it from Josh. No way, I know this girl. She's impetuous, but she's not lying. She did say she'd been out drinking last night, so we have to consider the possibility that she can't remember what happened. Dear Amy, it was a mistake. I hope we can get past this. You see, why would you write an apology on a business card as opposed to a post-it note or a bit of paper? I'm not sure it is an apology. He never actually says sorry. He refers to a mistake. And we thought the mistake was breaking into the flat. What if he means something else? Gov, Amy is frightened. Now, I know this isn't clear, but we can't wait for him to harm her before we do something. What do you suggest? We investigate him for harassment. OK. OK, get the CCTV from the bar. One of them's lying. It's going to be obvious from that which one it is. Remember, you need two separate instances to make any sort of case. The burglary doesn't count. Yeah, Joe, CPS won't go anywhere near this. Not over a chocolate muffin. That's her, isn't it? Yeah. Jeremy was telling the truth about one thing. She's definitely letting her hair down, isn't she? Mm. But no sign of Jeremy. He must be there. Can you fast forward it? Who's that? Is that him? Don't think so. No, it's... No, it's not him. Straight for the bottle. She's going for it, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be cosy. 2350. She doesn't want it to go too far, does she? Is she leaving? It's not him. Definitely, definitely not him. 23.51. That's him. Oh. That's him. Do they know each other, then? He's a bit uptight, isn't he? What's he saying to him, then? He's telling him to clear off, isn't he? Well, if he is, as it were, he goes, 23.51. She's gonna come back, isn't she? Yeah. There she goes. She's taking a number. Well, nothing wrong with that. 
Didn't she say she didn't meet anyone? It's pain. She's got a coat, hasn't she? Are they leaving together? They're leaving together. All right, I think it's about time Amy Ryan told us the full story. Yep. Why didn't you tell us? That I was out on the lash? Out in the pool, you think I'm proud of that? I was always in control, knew what I was doing. When Josh proposed, it was such a shock, you know? I mean, we've been together long enough, I suppose, seven years. But we like our own space. I never saw it coming. I laughed. I know, not good. He was really angry. He had every right to be, but I still... I still provoked him. Do you think you were trying to drive him away? Yeah, maybe. I just needed time, needed to know. It's a big commitment. I think that's what last night was about. Going to the bar, having some fun. Testing what I feel for Josh. And did it give you any answers? Well, yeah, there was this guy. Pretty cute, all flash. He asked me for my number, so I gave it to him. Made it clear he didn't want any strings attached, and neither did I, so... I took him back to the flat and we had sex. But it was wrong, it just felt wrong. I miss Josh. And I don't know how I'm gonna explain all this to him, but I have to tell him the truth. I do, don't I? Amy, this bloke, what was his name? Craig. His surname? I don't know, I didn't ask. Look, this is my personal life. What's it got to do with the fact that man is stalking me? Because, Amy, you were right. He was in the bar watching you. He spoke to Craig. You think they know each other? I don't know, darling, but if we can find Craig, then we might get some answers. Are you all right? No. No, not really. Look, why don't we get Josh down here, keep you company? I mean, the coffee here is really nice. How far have you got, Joe? Amy Ryan did have a one-night stand, but not with Jeremy Preston. It was with some bloke called Craig. Did you get a surname? No. Jeremy was at Acetone. He spoke to Craig briefly, but that's all we've got. The thing is, Joe, you've proved the guy's a weirdo. Unfortunately, being a weirdo is not a chargeable offence. No. Luckily for our day. <laughs> well... I've got the labs back from the Harker Lane crime scene. Something else. What is it? There's the blood I found at the flat around the window. It matches some blood samples I took from his clothes. It would, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, the thing is, that blood, it's not Mr Preston's. What are you talking about, Eddie? The guy had his nose broken nearly. There was blood everywhere. Yeah, uh, there's that. But he had someone else's blood on his clothes when he climbed through the window. Rhesus negative, so that narrows it down to at least 15% of the UK population. Now, that's got to be significant, right? Yeah, but why? Because blood dries really quickly. To have left a smear on the window means it was still fresh. Sir, can we widen the search at Amy's place? Oh, I don't think we've got the bodies to do that. Sir? Right, Eddie, you get a team together, check it out, but don't spend all day there. On this one, sir? Yeah. Make sure you go round. Careful where you step in, go round. What we got? There's blood in it. Lots of it. Someone was hurt here. Quite badly hurt. Scalp wound. Very messy. Any idea it belongs to? No. All we know is that Jeremy had blood on him when he entered Amy's flat. 
Do you think he was involved in a fight? No CCTV. No, there's no witnesses either because we canvassed this area earlier. Sarge, it doesn't look like it's from a mug and it's still got the cash and cards inside. That's the bar. Now, what's the betting that that's Amy Ryan's number? Yeah. Here's our boy, Craig Wilkins. Okay. Nice one, Neil. Nice bed on your left. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wilkins, Sergeant Stone, DC Masters, Sun Hill. How's your head, Mr. Wilkins? Not good. Can you tell us what happened here? I don't know. I really can't remember. One minute I'm walking home, the next I'm lying on the pavement, blood running down my face. I thought I was dying. It was everywhere. Scalp wounds will do that to you. Did you see who attacked you? I thought it was a mugging. I, I threw my wallet at him. I didn't get a look at his face. Whereabouts do you live, sir? Oldman Street. Oldman Street. That's the other side of town, isn't it? Where had you been? Um, don't remember. Let me try and fill in a few blanks for you. You were to acetone last night. At 2.42am, you left with a woman called Amy Ryan. You went back to her flat, had sex, and were attacked in the street as you left. How do you know that? We think we know who did it. But we need your help to prove it. All I heard was a voice. Stay away from her. She doesn't belong to you. A boyfriend? I don't know. Not quite. We'll need you to do a voice identification for us. No. I don't think you understand. I can't do that. My wife. I don't think you understand, sir. The man who did this to you is dangerous. You were lucky. Next person might not be. I'm sorry, I can't help you. We all know it won't end here. Last night, Jeremy followed Amy Ryan to a bar, followed her home, lay in wait for Craig Wilkins and violently assaulted him. Question is why? Jealousy. He's acting like the jealous boyfriend. It might be a fantasy, but it's one he believes. Believes enough to break into her home, stand in her bedroom while she sleeps, pick up a knife to do God knows what with. I mean, do you see the trajectory? He's got to be stopped. I honestly believe he broke into that flat to kill her. We've got to do something. But unless we can get Craig Wilkins to make a statement, we can't charge Preston with the assault he has committed, let alone the one that you might commit. Joe's right. He's obsessed. If Hunt hadn't walked in in the morning, then she could well have been raped or killed. Aggravated burglary is a 14-year sentence. Yeah, but we need to prove that Preston intended to harm Amy. That's right. And we don't have the evidence, Joe. Maybe we could get it in interview. He must have been stalking her for months to know so much about her. If we expose that, he might crack. Go on. Well, let's start with his lies. He broke into a desk. Let's start with that and move on. That's a long shot, John. That's all we've got, Gov. Go for it. His workspace, this is pretty much it. Give us a minute. Other than her trolls, this is what Jeremy does. He sits here and watches. Right. We're going to need the CCTV for Amy Ryan's office floor. Do you have that? Sure. We hang on to it for a week before wiping her. Which is Amy Ryan's floor? Ah. There you go. Thanks very much. Thank you. Did you ever have a crush on someone at school? Sure. Do you remember that feeling, like your guts are all tied up, dry mouth? All for someone you barely speak to. Well, imagine feeling like that every single day. Every day you have to look at the person who makes you feel like that. From the moment they walk into the building, as they go to their desk, to the coffee point, laugh with their friends, write their emails. Every single minute of every single day. Dry mouth, guts churning. Drive you mad. Got that uh, CCTV that you wanted? Grab it. Good 
you expecting to see? No, sure. Let me know how we get on. Try taking the disc out and putting it back in again. What's happened? I'm not sure. Looks as though it's been wiped, but it shouldn't be until Monday morning. Who's got access to it? Who could have done that? Well, me and Jeremy. Her favourite colour is blue. It's the colour of her mother's eyes. She has a mole on her right shoulder that she worries is growing since a holiday in Marbella last September. Her favourite drink is a mojito. She says her favourite film is Breakfast at Tiffany's, but it's actually Home Alone 2. Her favourite song is The Unforgettable Fire by U2. And the only reason she refused to marry Josh was because two months ago she had a miscarriage. She never even told him she was pregnant. She never told him she was pregnant. She felt terrible. That was enough to show her that she didn't really love him. So it was all a fantasy? Jeremy used these truths to create a fantasy with himself at the heart of it. And he genuinely believes it. Genuinely believes that she told him all this, rather than him spying on it. Well, he has to believe it, or the fantasy he's created comes crashing down. What happens if and when the fantasy world does come crashing down? But it did, in the bar last night, when he saw Amy Ryan pick up a complete stranger. And I need to make him face facts that no amount of lies can make this real. I've already told you. This is silly. I'd never hurt Amy. You really care for her, don't you? No connection. And when did you first realise that? Don't know. I noticed her. We got to talking one day and suddenly she was there. I knew we were meant to be together. What was it you noticed about her? She's nice. She was nice to me. Tell me about the first time that you met her. How's she getting on? She's doing well. Yeah, when you properly met her, you know. She's been at it a while, entering his world. It's tough because he she completely believes every word he's saying. Wasn't that special? She needs to burst his bubble. We laughed. You know, we danced. You danced at the Christmas party, was that? Yeah. Yeah. Does he tell you? No, Jeremy. Amy doesn't remember you at all, apart from this morning when you broke into a flat. <laughs> I didn't break in. I was invited. No, that's a lie. That's not real. You made that up. I don't have to listen to this. We shared things. Personal things. She didn't share things with you. You stole them. You stole her secrets and her feelings and her life. This is all a fantasy. You want reality? I'll show you reality, pal. For the benefit of the tape, I'm now showing the suspect exhibit JM1 through 5, photographs of Amy Ryan with her partner, Josh Hunt. She doesn't love him. No? I know she doesn't. Oh. Maybe you're right. Maybe that's why she was kissing a stranger in the acetone bar last night. Take them away. Why, Jeremy? See, there's Amy kissing someone she'd met less than an hour ago. We know you were there. Are you somewhere in the background watching her take him home to her bed? Take them away. What do you want from me? I want the truth, Jeremy. I want to know what you were doing in Amy Ryan's flat last night. What were you thinking? What were you feeling? I don't know. You see, a year ago at the Christmas party, you were doing whatever it is you usually do, when suddenly you found this attractive, sexy, funny woman talking to you, noticing you. 
You could hardly believe it, but you cherished it. And the next day you passed her in the corridor, you probably went to say hi or, or wave at her, and she walked right past you, oblivious. She didn't even notice you, let alone remember you. Stop. So you pretended it was something else. You pretended that she did notice you, but that it was a secret between yourselves. And every day you watched her come into work, sit at her desk, live her life. While you shared the whole thing behind a camera, just like that one there. She invited me into her life. You can't do that and not expect consequences. She couldn't ignore what she'd done. She had to be shown. She needed to hurt like she hurt me. Want to see me, sir? Yeah, uh, take a seat, Joe. Do some good work today. The usual, sir. So, how do you get on with Sergeant Stone? Uh, fine. You know me, I love a bit of macho in the office. <laughs> he can be tricky sometimes. Well, he's been putting the hours in, hasn't he? He's tired. We've all been there. Yeah, and that's a problem. Also, there's been some communication issues. We need your help. How? Uniform need another sergeant to work alongside Sergeant Stone. Somebody strong. Right, I suppose so, yeah. Me? If you take it. You see, we need some, uh, some balance in the department. You seem to have a good working relationship with Stone. The troops look up to you. Come on, Joe. Help us out. How's the coffee? You lied. <laughs> so it's all over then? Yeah. Yes, it's over. Okay. Thank you. I had no idea. I can't believe I never even noticed him. So that's how obsession starts, I guess, by not being noticed. What are you going to do now? I'm going to stay with Josh for a few days at least. She told me. Well, congratulations. Lovely place for an engagement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> we should be getting off. Yeah, don't blame you. Thanks. You take care now. Anyway. No, you're all right. I need to stretch my legs. I've got some thinking to do. Well, I'll see you around. Yeah, you will. Sarge. There was a man in my house. I saw my dad. I think he's dead. Right, hello, PC Taylor, Sergeant Marshall, Sunny Hill. No visible signs of blood, which suggests it's been wiped down. 
He studies law, so he knew exactly how to cover up the murder scene by faking a burglary. The only question is how far the mother's in on it. And I don't think she's in on it, Gov. I think she did it. And there's me thinking I'd missed the idea. 